we're live. Yay! Hi everybody! Cool! So nice to see so many of you here already waiting for, as you have just so eloquently put it, the cringe fest. <laughs> Quite frankly, we are here for some good old-fashioned cringe. Today we've got some cringy updates to, I, I'm really going to put this in the, definitely the top 10 cringiest partner shamers I've covered, but possibly the top five. Definitely in the top five cringiest partner shamers I have ever covered in my <laughs> tenure as a partner shamer narc. Okay, and of course, to catch you all up to speed real quick, I am talking about the infamous now Lindsay Donnelly. So if you're not familiar, I did cover this in a previous live, but I understand if you don't all have time to watch me for hours and hours at a time. Trust me, I do. So I'll give you a quick Spark Notes recap, right? Uh, I'm also going to have a condensed, consolidated version of this coming out this week, just quick little bite-sized forms. So if you miss the rest of this, you'll definitely have an opportunity to catch up in both the live, if you want to watch the whole thing and all the things we cover outside of this, or if you want to stay tuned, I'll also be condensing this whole live down into another 20 minute video down the road. So if that's your cue to just like tune out now and wait for something shorter later, this is the giggling freak. Yes. <laughs> So, where last we left with this partner shamer, the gist of this one is that Lindsay not only made this video saying my husband made a comment that I do nothing around the house. So, her revenge, so to say, was that she then left the house for three days on a girl's trip to Philly in order to show him what it's really like for her to not do anything around the house. Now, as you can see from the status of the likes and comments here, I mean, it's at 3.1 million likes. The video itself has over 10 million views now. The last time I covered it, we had just surpassed 3 million, and it's just going. And as a consequence of this video, the internet hates her husband. They really do. Uh, divorce, top comment, don't let your husband stop you from finding your soulmates. Divorce, babe, divorce. Divorce is the best gift I ever gave myself. Just leave him. Without getting too deep into it, it's very clear to see that whether, even if this was intended as a well-mannered joke, even if it was intended to be a silly goof, as you can see from her hashtag, marriage humor, the joke didn't land and everyone hates her husband, which as a result brought us to the cringiest partner shaming reaction video that I have ever covered in my life, wherein Lindsay asks her husband, who does not have a TikTok or social media, if he would sit down and live react to some news that she had to share with him, which is when she, through continuous giggles and downplaying of the situation, reveals to him that only one million, because she really downplayed the number a little bit there, only one million people uh, hate him and want her to leave him. As I'm sure you can imagine, uh, this one, it, it did not feel great. However, any redemption that she was hoping this video may provide, any clarity she was hoping that this would shed light on for the world to see, like, oh, in actuality, my husband is a good partner. And to respond to the YouTube comment from someone saying, wait, 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 he didn't know? You silly goose, of course he didn't. These people never know that they're being partner shamed. That's the thing. Mostly, and I've covered this in the past and I'll cover it again, 
mostly people who partner shame end up doing so to partners who are very private, who are not on social media. And the reason being that they think they're going to get away with it. That if their partner were to be on social media actively checking their things, they wouldn't be posting these videos because they would immediately be caught, so to say. And she even says in this video that the only reason that she is even sharing this with him is because she was afraid that one of those only one million people would share it with him. Now, Lindsay, why would you be afraid of him finding out? If what you were doing was so righteous, so from the heart, so from a good, healthy, stable place, what are you worried about, Lindsay? Spoiler alert! There is no reason to believe that. So we're back. Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed that nice breath of fresh air uh, as the stream completely self-imploded on itself like a dying star and my Wi-Fi crashed. But uh, we're back. If you'd like to um, tell, tell your friends to, to come on back, um, hopefully we stay up this time. Uh, we'll be looking into some Wi-Fi stabilization solutions coming up. I went and touched grass as the stream died. I thought of using a hammer. Let me tell you. Ooh, Lord. I mean, we only lost a few minutes, I guess. But we lost a lot of viewers. So now I have to debate here. Do I begin from the beginning we didn't get that far before everything combusted, that's for sure. I can do an even more spark notesy catch up if those of you just know, just joining now would like just like a super speed run catch up of the partner shaming. Let's do it. Okay. So <laughs> great. Of course my window went away. Boom. Okay, let's bring it back. When last we left, we were discussing the case of Lindsay Donnelly, who convinced the world that her husband told her that she does nothing around the house. She then reveals to him that she did indeed get 10 million different people on the internet to hate him um, after he had no idea, considering he does not have a TikTok, does not post videos to social media, uh, and would not have been comfortable with any of this whatsoever. That was when last we left. Uh, was her kind of breaking this news to him, by the way, uh, in front of their children, as you can see. Let's just do all of this in front of the kids, uh, make it as uncomfortable as possible. And since this partner shaming, Lindsay has posted a lot more videos. Absolutely every single one of the, those seeming to prove without a shadow of a doubt that this is all for clout. I mean, if there was any shadow of a doubt in your mind that the reason that we posted these things was for clout, especially knowing even from the beginning days of this saga that Lindsay is a fledgling business owner, really trying to get her new startup off the ground. The pieces really come together to make us think that maybe, just maybe, like many partner shamers before her, this is actually just a big business move. I mean, we've seen it in the past with the fiance partner shamer who tried to get TikTok to speculate on whether or not her new husband was cheating on her at his bachelor party. We came to find out that the two of them own a fitness business together and that just mere days before her partner shaming event, she had posted another video brainstorming ideas on how to go viral. It's just becoming very clear to me that people are picking up on the shaming my husband or making my husband look like a monster and myself look like a victim phenomenon 
as just the next new marketing tool. So let's take a look at some of the new <laughs> videos she's uploaded. Oh God, someone said, dude's face says he's staying for the kids. You know, that right there is definitely a I'm staying for the kids face. <laughs> so here's the next video that was uploaded by Miss Lindsay following this recent uh, traction, I guess. My beige flag is that I have a good sense of humor, but if you cross me, I might kind of accidentally roast you in a TikTok video and let 7 million people join in on the fun. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the whole beige flag trend. Essentially, there's a trend where people are going around talking about either their own or their partner's beige flags. And a beige flag is supposed to be a cute, not red flag, just kind of like a cute little quirk about this person. And like, what a fucking narcissist playbook move to turn vindictively roasting and lying about the person that you're supposed to love and protect more than anyone in the world as just a cute little quirk. It's just a cute little idiosyncrasy that I have, you guys. In fact, it actually makes me more empowered as a woman that every single time me and my husband get into even the most minor of tiffs, I can and will do absolutely everything in my power to terminally embarrass him. No, that's really healthy. I love feminism. <laughs> I want to read the comments on this. Do you guys, do you guys feel like being miserable with me? Let's torture ourselves. God, she did it again with the hashtag marriage humor they all do this dude this is partner shaming 101 is they do something that is literally nothing but toxic and then they're like it's a joke you guys don't get our sense of humor like this is a you problem not a me problem and yet <laughs> this is another thing is when they come so close to being progressively self-aware and yet they stop right at the line of only being comedically self-aware like i'm gonna be self-aware to the point of making fun of myself but not actually changing the behavior that we're all collectively making fun of this is like it's, it's similar to humble bragging in that you're still absolutely bragging. You're just trying to downplay that you're bragging. Like, this is just a red flag, actually. But you're, like, humbly downplaying it. It's like, it's not, like, really that red. It's more of, like, what, like a magenta, would you say? Would you say, Karen? Like, there ain't nothing beige about this, okay? I've seen a lot of beige. We live in the era of sad beige baby. I know what beige looks like. It's just, it's just burning red, Lindsay. It's just burning red. But the comments, let's see what the comments have to say. <laughs> that's, my, that's me going in. Someone else says, I feel like you're just laughing through the pain. I'm sorry. This isn't something us women should accept. Your husband is a whole red flag. You deserve better. Girl, please get as far away from that man as you can. Something about him is off. He gives everyone incredibly bad energy. It's in his eyes. Laughing through the pain. Been there, done that. Divorced now and happy. No one is on his side, dude. No one. So you know what? I'm like, okay, male privilege does exist. Female privilege does exist. But it's times like these that in this situation, only female privilege. No male privilege in this situation. And what's crazy 
is I, I think we can all objectively agree her husband is handsome. He is a tall, objectively handsome man. He is in the primary uh, white privilege box. And none of those things are doing him any favors from being savagely dragged by the balls across a field of broken glass by his own wife. Okay? None of his typical male privileges are even a slight shield from the absolute damage that he's taking right now. The next video... Okay, let's also address this. Because I think that this is a fair issue to bring up. One YouTube commenter says, the problem is that he has no spine. But what what kind of a precarious situation is he put in? I feel like, no offense, I feel like a comment like that is a little bit of victim blaming because he is put in such a bad situation. Okay, I think that we can all agree that even if he were to defend himself, it would make the situation worse. Like, imagine if when she was filming his reaction, especially with the, with the army of vitriol that she has already dredged up, how bad it would have been if during that live reaction video he actually did raise his voice to her even a little bit. Oh, dude, they would have been calling his workplace. They would have been finding his place of employment and getting him fired, dude. They've done it in the past with men who have been partner shamed. Far from the first time these men that these women post online end up getting doxxed and their lives ruined, okay? So if he were to make a clapback video, I think that he knows, just like she knows, just like I know and most of you know, it'd just make it worse for him. It would just bury him even quicker than she's slowly shoveling the dirt on top of it's it's a mess now this one mm, all right I, i've warned you guys in the past i've been good about this when we're about to watch some extra triggering content to maybe do whatever works best for you to take a deep breath calm yourself because this makes me want to put my fist through my lovely 27 inch curved display. Okay? After all of that, after all of that, after going, he said I don't do anything around the house. I'm gonna show him how much I really do. After all that, oh, I'm so proud. I'm so proud that I roasted him. Mm, don't you cross me. I'm an empowered woman. Now we get this. Me when that TikTok video went viral where I roasted my almost perfect husband, but he cooks all my vegetarian meals the way I like them, cleans daily more than I do, pays all the bills, takes me on fancy vacations, and lets me be me. It be the most privileged women that got y'all all so conned into thinking they are the biggest victims. I swear to you. Did I mention she has a nanny, by the way? Did I mention that? Somehow, uh, that detail seems to be erroneous to her audience, that she has multiple videos referring to her nanny. She, she basically lives in one of those classic, like, farm-style mansions, to give you an idea like, guys, the, the, this is the stuff that, that she's posting from. Oh, she deleted the picture of her in her uh, giant pool. She had turned the comments off from that one once some people started pointing out, like, how much privilege she has. But the audacity... Now he suddenly cleans even more than you do daily. He pays all of the bills. Now, again, I've said this before. Simply being the sole provider does not give you carte blanche to treat your spouse any crappy way you want or start having these unrealistic expectations. Of course not. Of course not. 
but you had all these positive things to say about him and you chose to go viral for the one rough little argument that you had. As you're living in this beautiful, pristine home, going on a regular vacations, having him basically wait on you hand and foot, I mean, he pays all the bills and he's still doing more chores than you? And he's the one getting hate? <coughs> that went down the... <coughs> <coughs> Quick live recovery. That dramatic tea sip <coughs> did not end the way I wanted it to. Okay, note to self. <coughs> no dramatic tea sips. Okay, reeling that back. Now that I'm uh, literally crying over this. This is why I'm here. This is why... This is why I create content. Because someone needs to come in here and turn the tides. It is ridiculous that these women are getting away with this in such incredible numbers to where... My little comments don't even phase her, okay? And there's more, and there's more. Wait, wait, wait. We've got to go back and check out the comments on the other one. I lied. I got a little too trigger happy. Y'all need to see how people are reacting to her little, my husband does more than me. One sec. Had a cough. <sighs> oh, yeah. I also forgot to read the caption. Guys, I'm screwed. Aw, that's so cute. Surely, after posting something like this, where you show the world that he's actually an overly helpful, just amazing kind of guy... Surely they'll see that you actually have a healthy marriage and it was all just like silly marriage humor all along, right? <laughs> right? This is always the type of post they pick after. Yeah. If he cleans more than you, I'm curious how the house got so messy in those three days. I have a theory on this. I really do. My theory on how the house stayed so messy after those three days is this. The whole reason they got into a fight, right, is... I, now, one thing that I covered before is that she initially says, Oh, he told me I'd do nothing. But in the video where she's actually speaking to him directly, what she says is, Hey, do you remember when you said something that made me feel like you said that I did nothing? Okay, so I don't know what he really actually said. Uh, I did, she had an Instagram poll. Wish I would have taken, I did take screenshots of this. I'll actually, in the final YouTube version of this, remind me to superimpose them and just put it here. Aha, the screenshot here of when I asked Lindsay Donnelly the question, did he really say what you said he said or did you lie about that? She responded here, which will be on screen. <laughs> As such, she ended up saying something along the lines of, oh, yes, he really did say that. I just kind of paraphrased. W whatever it is that he said, she said she just kind of summarized it. So going back to what they, whatever it is that they were originally fighting about, it's clear that he was not super thrilled with the state of the home when he returned from work and that it felt like to him that there wasn't a lot getting done around the house, which I have to admit, as a person who does work more hours than my husband, I've felt that way myself. And it's definitely something that I've worked on in order to have better, healthier communication with my husband so that I'm not always coming home and being like, why isn't dinner made? Why isn't the house the way that I like it? Because no one likes to sound like a grumpy, abusive 1950s husband. You know what I mean? But what I am saying is your feelings are valid when you're also the person coming home and hoping that the house is in some kind of a state that doesn't give you anxiety. 
your feelings as that person hoping to come home to a clean house also matter. Now, is it realistic to think that no matter how much money you make, you're always going to come home to a pristine house? No, that's not realistic, if, especially if you have kids. It just doesn't happen. But when you're a man, apparently you're not allowed to complain about that kind of thing or express concern about it in any regard. So they're, they're arguing about this. That was the original <laughs> argument. And now, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I had to remember where we were. They come home, that's what they're arguing about. So I'm, I'm answering the question of how the house got so messy in those three days and what my theory is. My theory is that that's what the house looked like when he came home. And that when she left, she was so pissed that, of course, she left it that way. But that he probably also left it that way because, first of all, nothing was properly communicated with him. She just up and left, didn't give them much time to work this out or structure it out at all. So he's probably thinking, hey, this is her mess. <laughs> now, I don't know how you feel about that, if you think that would be right or wrong, but my theory is that the reason that there's still a mess after those three days is because that's the mess that she created and that that was his way of pushing back a little. All right. Thank you for the super thanks. Wait a minute. Hippo character falling to the ground in a dramatic way, bursting into tears at the words epic fail in the background. Is that, I'm so, sorry, was that supposed to like appear differently like through Super Chat or is it supposed to be typed out that way? I've never seen that before, but I am getting the visual. Back to the comments. <laughs> it's so frustrating when we're... <laughs> Sorry, it's so frustrating when women rightfully call out their trash bag husbands and then follow it up with, he's perfect, I promise. Here's my question for you, Jojo, 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 is how do you know that he is rightfully 1000% all trash and not a good person with flaws? How do you and 697 other people feel so con like confident in that? Oh, <laughs> thanks for clarifying that it's animated on there. I'm <laughs> reading the comments via Restream because it's bigger text and I'm legally blind. <laughs> but thank you for the animated hippo super thanks <laughs> that I will have to view later. <laughs> and here's the thing, it's crazy because like even when she's out here doing damage control, no one believes her. Isn't it funny how when she comes on here and she says, my husband says I do nothing, they all believe her hands down. Yes, your husband said exactly that and we hate him for it now. But when she then comes out and says, but actually he is an angel who does all these amazing things for me, that's when we stop believing women. That is when women are not to be trusted. She's a liar. She's being dramatic. She's controlled by the patriarchy. She has lost her autonomy. And I've noticed this is true of myself as well, because you notice whenever I choose of my own volition to defend and advocate for men, suddenly it's, oh, she's being controlled by men. She's only doing it for some obscure alternative reason. Like, y'all don't want to give women autonomy when it comes to the possibility that we might actually care about men. Y'all don't want to believe that women are capable of doing that. Like, quit projecting. That's just useless. If you have to do th this, this is so crazy how, like, lacking in self-awareness the commenters are. If you have to do this much damage control, maybe don't be with someone like that without even realizing that she wouldn't have to do this much damage control if she didn't make the actions that she chose to take. She wouldn't have to do this damage control if she didn't put her man on blast, if she didn't put their marriage issues out there for everyone else to criticize and judge. But nope, 
It's all the man's fault. I think we've had enough of this. Moving on to her next post. That's only the beginning of the damage control, guys. Um, quick question. Let's turn the volume up, sorry. Um, quick question. What are all the good wives getting their husbands for Father's Day? Asking for a friend. Shin. Oh, it's so funny and quirky and cute. She's making fun of herself uh, by calling herself not a good wife. Tee -hee, see, he's not the only one I, I roast a little bit. I, I, too, can take a little piece of roasting pie. Except she knows what's going to happen because it's... It's the pattern of things that has been happening that she's now feeding off of and craving for so desperately, which is she's going to receive the validation and he's going to get made fun of even more. Caption is, would love to shop small if possible. Yeah, I bet you would. What do the comments say? What do the comments say? A cleaning chore sheet. She says, you get that on Amazon? Same thing he got me. Nothing. Because, as he put it, I'm not his mother. Good. Good. Great. I'm glad that we're just opening up a whole platform for everybody to just get out all of their internalized resentment towards my husband. We can all just marinate in the ghosts of things our husbands have done that have pissed us off past. I don't know what that is. A maid. Too late, be life They already have a nanny. Oh, but these poor, poor, upper class people sure do need one more helping hand in there for sure. Nothing, because he has never made me his wife after 18 and a half years. It's so weird how, like, this always happens. A woman will be like, hey, my husband is a terrible person, and I, we're barely hanging on by a thread, and people will be like, where's your jewelry from? <laughs> there are good wives in here, actually, commenting toward the very bottom. But the point here is that we're clearly out here trying to do some damage control now, okay? I, I think she realizes deep, deep, deep down, oh, bup kiss is slang for nothing. Such a cute, silly joke. But, God, this is just such a weird part about, like, this kind of humor is it's like, it's a funny joke that we hate our husbands and don't like to show them appreciation and are perfectly fine with completely lying and exaggerating about the things that they do to make them look as terrible as possible. How is that marriage humor? Uh, what? And again, the, like... I wish I could give you a break between these TikToks to show her doing literally anything else with her life, like anything else interesting, but I'm telling you, this is, this is it for her. This is the new, like, light of her life. There has been nothing else interesting enough going on in her life prior to her getting 10 million views for partner shaming the ever living shit out of her husband. And this is what clout does to people is they only see the number. They are only seeing oh, 3.1 million people like my video, 3.1 million people like my video. And that means that I'm right. That means that nothing that I did is wrong. And people just, they conflate views with 
morality. Like, if I get enough views, then what I'm saying and doing must be on the up and up. People must think that it is good. And there is such a wide margin between views and actual, like, ethical, principled <laughs> character. Right? So we're back with her on her bullshit, clout chasing. So today wrote an article about her viral TikTok, and she, of course, is just over the moon. It's giving very wife strike when the international news covered her shaming her husband. It's just gonna, history is just gonna keep repeating itself. Okay, the article was good, but why? Do I have to look like a criminal and have like a mugshot? Man accuses. All right. To look like a there was a there was a top comment here that just nails it. Actually, I gotta read this one to you. The top comment says, "It says man accuses because he is a man and he accused you of something." I hope this helps. Barry also helps. The reason why they said man accuses is for the reason it hasn't been confirmed or admitted by the man himself. Therefore, they use accuses. <laughs> August Dreaming and Barry Mango, thank you for your service. This is my electronic kiss to you. And of course, the female empowerment thinks savage, not cr criminal. Now look, I would mentioned earlier in the stream that we have kind of a chronic issue of partner shamers using partner shaming to attempt to elevate their business that they're trying to launch, right? It's goofy because you can't do such a short-term thing and expect a long-term viewerships and engagement when it was a completely different thing that even made you viral. But for some reason, these marketers are still trying to do it. But if there was any doubt before, let's check out some of these comments. Get it, girl. It's just advertising. Advertising. Finally, people are starting to call her out. Oof, really trying to drag this out for likes, huh? You really did slander your husband on the internet, though. Hope he leaves you. Oh, wait, 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 and then we have wine here. People will literally spin this out of anything for clickbait. Mm, I don't know what was spun here. What, what was spun? What was inaccurate about this, uh, this title? Are you mad? I think she's mad that they dared use the word accuse. See, narcissists don't like it when you use language that suggests that their account of things and their narrative may be anything but 200% accurate. That's really gonna piss them off here. Like, and why do you look like a criminal? Gee golly, maybe it's because you were being a giant a-hole? Maybe that's the reason that no one really went out of their way to make sure that you were presented it with a flattering angle because you're being a monumental jerk to your husband for views. Maybe that's why, but I don't know, just speculation on my end, really. And then this one... This one shows such a lack of any perception of how things work. This one in particular is just a whole can of brain worms. Just like, it's like a can of brain worms that has been covered in gasoline and then lit on fire. And now the brain worms are somehow like being broken up into multiple other brain worms and just spreading. That's how stupid this TikTok is. She, she quotes the fact that the NBA playoffs across ABC, ESPN, and TNT averaged 5.47 million viewers. 
making it the most watched playoffs in five years, and then proceeds to go ahead boasting, just thinking about how my one TikTok video had three times the views of the NBA playoffs. With the caption being, somebody in marketing tell me how much those games cost. I, it is at this time that I need to remind you all that Lindsay claims to be the CEO of a marketing company and yet somehow thinks that her TikTok video should accrue the same kinds of profits as the NBA playoffs. The CEO of a marketing company is conflating one viral TikTok with a massive sports event. Let's play a fun game. List as many things in the chat as you possibly can think of over the course of the next minute or so that go into making a playoffs event happen. Now, list all of the sacrifices, resources, materials, hours of training, blood, sweat, tears, determination that Lindsay had to put in to shame her husband on the internet and then go get drunk for three days. I'll, I'll wait, because I know that so many of you are, are going to argue with me. So many of you absolutely see her side, right? We're all seeing her side. We're almost at the end. We are almost to the end, fortunately. This is our... Our final video, and I really don't know how to feel about it. Because, because aren't, did we expect nothing less than after just days and days and days of leaving up viral videos that absolutely decimate the entire reputation of our husband, just absolute character assassination up, down, and across, just seppuku of his self-confidence. Uh, after all that, don't we always just have the cute, oh, look how cute my husband is, look how good of a dad, look, we love each other, we love each other, and you don't get it. Don't we always just get that? <laughs> this comment. <laughs> but Lauren, she felt bad for something once. <laughs> <laughs> my husband asked me do you love me I said yes he said how do you know and I said because of that mm. it's so cute you're such an empowered woman objectifying the man that you don't respect. <laughs> we, you know what? We showed them. We finally did it. We've reached full equality. It used to be only men who could completely disrespect their spouses, have absolutely not an inkling, not an inkling of regard for their reputation, how people view them, just coming home, making demands, going off, doing their own thing whenever they want to, and then, you know, just objectifying the ever-living shit out of them physically. It used to be just men that got to enjoy that privilege. Now, feminism has sure done its thing. We've turned it around, and now we get to do that. That's all we wanted. Look, voting, pff, 
I mean, really just a sprinkle on top. The main cake that we wanted to get to was talking about men's cakes without any fear or regard of any consequences. You know, that being able to speak about men as though all they're good for is cleaning, cooking, and that deck. That's... We finally made it in feminism, you guys. Another question that I have. Um, why is your husband asking if you love him? Simple question. Simple question because most of us in healthy, loving relationships don't need to ask that question, much less follow it up with, how do you know? Y'all, if this is a real conversation that was had and not just like something that she made up so she could have a, and then the whole train clapped moment, uh, I'm concerned. I, I'm really worried about where this guy's headspace is at if he's asking questions like this. Again, I, dude, I've been married for a long time and I cannot think of a single time that I have asked my husband, A, if he loves me or B, how he knows he loves me. Am I crazy here, or are those two questions that you should never have to ask your spouse? And like, like, right? The love part? The love part? Are you not reminding him? Do you do not remind your husband that you love him? Are there just people out here, like, living their lives and just, like, assuming he just knows? Don't answer that. I know the question's yes, and that was just another one of those, like moments where I'm blissfully unaware and then I remember how cruel and sad the world is. Uh, disregard that. Yeah, I guess that does happen a little too often. But even if, even if you're one of those not super romantic couples and you don't feel the need to remind each other that you love each other all the time and you're more the type to just th show it through actions or have it be assumed through all the sa daily sacrifices that you make for them, even in that case, again, they should still know. They should still be feeling the love even if it doesn't necessarily get spoken all of the time. So by the time a man is asking you this, dude, by the time a man is asking you if you really love him. And the fact that she just turns it into a joke. I know that there's predominantly an audience of men in the chat right now listening to this. Just go ahead and let me know, either with like a Y or an N, if you have ever asked a woman this question. Have you ever asked a woman if she loves you. Because I feel like this is not a question that guys just throw out there willy-nilly. I don't even think it's a question that a, a lot of women tend to ask. Really, I guess women ask more, more often than men. We are known to be the more emotional creatures. So I'm getting a lot. Okay, it's kind of like 50-50, honestly. So then, follow-up question... Did y'all pretty much break up not too long after you asked that question, yes or no? <laughs> Tell me if you... Hard N, if you actually stayed with the person for a long time after they... After you asked this question. Hard Y, yes, if you broke up very shortly after you asked this question. I'm still waiting for some of the responses, but from what I'm seeing, it would appear that, yep, 
one month later, she ended up breaking up with me, broke up almost right after. You get it. You guys get it. That was a fun little social experiment, but you get it. The point is, <laughs> by the time a man is asking if you really love him, some questions are in the air. And by the time he's doubly asking, how do you know he doesn't feel it? He doesn't believe you when you say that you do. So for his sake, I hope that she's making up this conversation because the saddest part about it is this means that this man opened up in a way that is incredibly vulnerable, especially for a man, to ask such deep emotional questions in a world where men are often socialized and scrutinized and where he's been put in a, such, in a position to where he has no reason to believe that his emotions won't be socialized and scrutinized, to open up and still be that vulnerable and have the whole entire response to that be, well, I know that I love you because you're hot. Okay, I can tell you right now that if this was a woman asking a man, do you really love me? And if so, how do you know for sure? And his whole response was, because of that ass. Instantly canceled, dude. Dude, no one would be on his side. Men, women, children, his own mom. They'd all be whacking him upside the head with a wooden spoon, dude. That's not something that you can say. That's, when a man does it, extremely sexist, juvenile, inappropriate, objectifying, misogynistic. But let's see what the comments are like when a woman does it. When a when a man has genuine, serious, and valid concerns about the state of where they are at in their marriage, how does the internet respond to such things? Nice. So not only he's an a-hole who doesn't contribute, he's also shallow. What a catch. Someone clearly has no reading comprehension skills because, like, the, to give you an idea of how brain dead the commenters are sometimes, they're still so mad at him for this thing that they just had a knee jerk reaction to hating him for without even bothering to get any additional context whatsoever. But they also are so quick in hating him that they just quickly read this to think that he's the one saying it about her. This commenter thought he was the one answering it that way. So the, the example that I just gave of what if a man did this, everyone would hate him. This commenter thought that he did it and she hates him. So point proven. Obligatory damage control video. I can't believe you are still with someone who tells you that you don't do anything. Sexist and misogynist. Bad husband. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be a single mom if he said I didn't do anything around the house. Dude, so like this video isn't even about that. And people are coming from that video. Literally, this is what they do. They're all watching the viral one. And then they're going, where is he? Where's the husband? I need to insult him. I need to hate him. That's what's happening. And these women, they, they either have no idea or they have recognized it but are choosing to like an idiotic ostrich just to ram their head into the sand and pretend it doesn't exist, they have to be aware in some regard of the fact that when they make content like this, they are sending women out there to try and find these men and take their head. They have to be aware of this. And so that's what the women are doing now is they're here to find any semblance of what he might look like so that they can make fun of him as much as possible. And she's just here to leave these videos up and keep that going. If he said I did nothing around the house, that love would quickly fade. Uh, Celine here is like, leave her alone. She wants to stay. Thanks, Celine. An actually nice ex-husband rally girls divorce. 
this is just the way TikTok works, is literally that they're so, like salivating at the mouth to try to contribute to someone's divorce. That's all they want in this life. So, dude, I, I really don't know what's on the horizon for this lady, uh, her brand, or what she's got going on here. I can tell you this, her man Brian, he's not going anywhere. I, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I found him on Instagram and I tried to send him a friend request, but he immediately denied it. I'm imagining that I was just lost in a slew of other women, like I said, trying to find him. And I couldn't message him or anything, so there's no way for me to clarify, like, hey, Brian, just so you know, like, I'm actually a woman on the internet who doesn't hate you. Just want to show you some support. But, like, that's another crappy thing here is, look, like, think about this, okay? We're, we all, all of us here, we have this safe space where we have each other, right? So it's it's very validating and relieving that we're all here in the space and we're all able to look at this and say, this is crazy. This woman is unhinged. What she's done is very inappropriate. And hopefully he can start standing up to this and not have to deal with this for much longer. But imagine what Brian's experiencing because he's not on social media. He's not here with us. His first and only that we know of exposure to any of this was her sitting him down and telling him that over 8,000 people have commented that she should leave him. And that alone has got to not feel great. But now juxtapose that with the fact that, again, he's not on social media. He can't check these comments to see if there's anybody at all on his side. He can't see the people who are sticking up for him. And so he's just out there living in this world right now, thinking everyone hates him. People in my comments are making really good points. Xavier says, dude must be paranoid and depressed by now. I can only imagine how I would feel because there are so many elements to the betrayal that he must feel. Because as I brought up before, not only did he have a a crappy fight with his wife, which always sucks. Fights happen and they always suck. But then it was a big fight because she left on an unexpected girls trip and was doing things the entire time that were designed around making him insecure. Posting passive aggressive stories about, oh, if you saw us in Philly, no, you didn't. With pictures that made it look as though she was knockout drunk doing all of these manipulative things that are additionally making him feel bad, then, after his wife has walked out for three days, partied her ass off in the city, left him to deal with the kids, he's already going through all this stress and anxiety. He's now told millions of people hate him on the internet. So there's also that. All of this that he's going through with, with no recourse... And none of us have the ability to reach out and contact him and let him know that any of us do support him. He's, I have no idea what kind of support this man is getting in his life at all. And it's so sad. So I guess this has been part two of the Lindsay Donnelly partner shaming update. And... It's probably going to be the last episode on this because I really don't know where else her channel could possibly go because apparently she has a marketing company, but she doesn't know much about marketing. <laughs> and I don't know how many times you can shame your husband on the internet uh, wow, it's at 18.4 million now. You know what's also cringy about this that I didn't notice before? 
is the fact that she has underage children walking around shirtless in the background. Like, at least I'm pretty sure that kid is shirtless. Dude. You can't have kid nipples. I'm gonna report this. Let's help Brian by taking this down. We got- we got children's nipples in this video. We- <laughs> I'm gonna- I'm gonna get this taken down, y'all. <laughs> Let's see. Here we go. Uh. Uh. I'm gonna count it. Uh, male presenting child nipples. We don't- we can't have that kind of thing on TikTok, okay? I've literally had pictures of my infant daughter removed from Instagram for nipples. Okay, so let's, let's do this in a grand, weird loophole. Let us hope and pray the TikTok is also like, you know what, we also don't like that brief point four seconds of kid nipple. We're going to have to, we're going to have to nuke this entire 18.4 million <laughs> video. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, but, <laughs> but, but it does my additional point as we're wrapping things up here for this for this evening is dude those kids are in so many of the videos while all of this is going on like they're in the video where she's sitting her husband down to confront him about all of this like she's saying in front of their very cognizant above infant age children that Hey, yeah, uh, I did this really funny thing where I made a million people hate you and 8,000 people say I should divorce you. Talking about that in front of the children. Do you know how terrifying the concept of your parents breaking up is to have like planted as a, even a seed in your head as a child? And now... You, and you're paying attention because your parents are filming. I don't know about you. If my parents are filming anything, I as a kid am paying attention, especially if I'm allowed to be in the same room. They're, they're watching with eager eyes, okay? And they're just listening to her talking about, yeah, you did this a-hole thing that is making people say I should leave you. Congrats on giving your kids nightmare fuel for clout. Congrats on that. Congrats on giving your children relationship insecurity just for a little cup of clout. And dude, let's do some quick math here, okay? Going back to the whole NBA playoffs and my video got more views than the NBA playoffs, so that must mean that I'm not a giant crusty butthole of a woman. Let's do some math, okay? Because I've been a TikTok creator and like not to brag, but TikTok creator. I would say that the numbers that I get are probably in the top 5%, if not 1% of creators on this platform. And so I know how much the views pay and it's abysmal, dude, okay? You're making, let's say, it's about $40 per 1 million views. So at 18 million views, that is a lot. It's about $720. But the question now becomes, would you make your spouse look like the most hated, toxic piece of trash to 18 million people for $720? That's the final question of the evening. Would you or wouldn't you? And sure, Lindsay, in all of her narcissistic mental gymnastics wisdom, might have some kind of a comeback for me. Like, well, over time, it'll be more than $720 because I'm getting my business off the ground. Like, <laughs> sure. Maybe. Maybe. Just like all of the partner shamers of the past who have tried to promote their fitness businesses or their beauty blogs or 
what other little, or the mom who makes sober drinks, any of those people, I've checked up on their businesses since the partner shaming, okay? They're in the same place as they were months ago, years ago. No one's going anywhere over one-time partner shaming, okay? Because the same people who are there to scream divorce with their pitchforks and torches and, and just salivating at the hopeful eventual downfall of your marriage, none of those people are going to be sticking around hoping your business flourishes. You know that, right? You know that there is a stark difference between the people who watch viral videos and your actual friends, right? You do know that if Brian does start to actually see the outcome of what you've done and there are real ramifications to what you put out there in a petty childish fit and he decides to actually leave you, you do know that none of those 18 million people are going to be anywhere near to help pick up the pieces, right? But sadly, they don't. Sadly, these people have absolutely no recognition of this fact. And they're just going to keep doing it. You know? I, <laughs> t time will tell. Uh, and, you know, when she slowly enters a dead bedroom situation or Brian decides to eventually just quit trying because he's damned if he does or damned if he doesn't. And now she's the one going, well, I want to file for divorce because he's just not the same guy as when I met him. Only we will know the real answers why. Only us few who didn't fall to the popular masses of hating Brian because it was the cool thing to do only we will understand that the real reason that Brian isn't the same guy he was when you met him is because you fucking destroyed him. So cheers to all the guys who have recognized their worth, left those toxic, abusive relationships, and do not tolerate partner shaming. This one's for you, homies. All right. On that note, I still have a corporate job I have to go to uh, and get some work done on. So I'm going to head out now. I'm so glad that I was able to carve out some time for this live tonight, though, because I definitely, definitely wanted to cover this and give you guys the update. Uh, thank you to everybody who was around from the beginning who worked through some of that super annoying technical difficulties <laughs> that we were going through. And before I go, I am going to do a couple of other quick shouts. Um, first of all, check out my website, thedadvocate.net, if you want to check out any of my merch here. Uh, we have designated sink cups that come in many different colors. Um, you could get an original Spawn Point t-shirt for a lovely mother in your life. Um, we have really simple Dadvocate snapbacks if you want to show your support there. Um, I love this Dad's Matter hoodie. The front also says Dadvocate. Um, comes in a lot of cool colors. And then, of course, uh, we have this embroidered Have the Day You Deserve hoodie. Uh, big fan of that one, too. So, one more plug, one more plug. I have two new YouTube videos um, here on my Patreon that you can access with some of our higher tiers. If you want to go ahead and join, um, you will get access to this video, which is the consolidated one coming out soon, and this video. 
uh, if you just want to pregame on some more Dadvocate content. But anyway, all right, I think that's enough plugging to end out this video, but truly follow me on all the things. Uh, keep posted because I'm, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. Um, so look out, partner shamers, because I'm going to keep narking on you. So, all right. I love you guys so much. Until next time.